Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is the main idiopathic interstitial pneumonia, which is a diffuse parenchymal lung disease of unknown cause. Again, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a chronic progressive fibrotic interstitial lung disease of unknown cause that primarily occurs in older adults. Doctors suspect interstitial lung disease when an adult presents with unexplained exertional dyspnea, chronic dry cough, or Velcro-like inspiratory crackles on examination, and more specifically, um, fibrosis of the lung bases. The dyspnea is typically progressive over months to years. A differential diagnosis is heart failure and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, which people are often misdiagnosed as. Normally, our lungs allow for gas exchange. We inhale oxygen and blow out carbon dioxide. The functional units of the lungs are these individual alveoli, which contain and are surrounded by many important cells, including alveolar epithelium, macrophages, and fibroblasts. Capillaries contain red blood cells. Oxygen is, is inhaled and enters circulation by binding to hemoglobin within red blood cells. The exact cause of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is unknown, but certain risk factors have been identified, including genetic factors such as um, things, issues with surfactant proteins, gel-forming mucin, and telomerase things, other risk factors, older age, male sex, cigarette smoking, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, supposedly you know, micro-aspirations from this can trigger formation of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Another risk factor is obstructive sleep apnea, air pollution, and herpes infection. Whatever the trigger, risk, or cause of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is, it develops slowly, thought to be a result of recurrent micro-injuries. These injuries are specifically recurrent alveolar epithelial and basement membrane injuries, which activate cells within the alveoli to, re to release pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, such as TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, and um, MCP-1. And these mediators will activate resident, or, uh, resident fibro uh, fibrocytes and recruit circulating fibrocytes. On top of this, profibrotic chemicals such as platelet-derived growth factor and transforming growth factor beta are also secreted by alveolar cells, which stimulate fibroblasts to activate and proliferate, differentiate into myofibroblasts and stimulate collagen synthesis. And these fibroblasts will undergo further differentiation expressing unique surface proteins. Following the induction of fibroblast activation, proliferation, and differentiation by epithelial injury, the fibroblasts and myofibroblasts will organize into fibrotic foci. Growth factors targeting tyrosine kinase pathways are released continuously, which will promote fibrotic foci formation and evolution into a fibrosed lung. Collagen type 3 is the predominant form of collagen in the areas of early fibrosis, while collagen type 1 predominates in areas of mature fibrosis. Fibroblast proliferation and collagen deposition is a normal repair mechanism with acute injury to the lungs. However, repeated insults leads to a pro-fibrotic event where there is increased synthesis of connective tissue and reduced degradation leading to fibrosis. Fibrosis causes abnormal architecture of the lung parenchyma, resulting in loss of capillary surface areas and gas exchange units. Because of this, you expect to see poor gas exchange and transfer on a test called the DLCO. You also see hypoxemia, low oxygen levels in the blood. And so the investigations to order is a pulmonary function test, and this will show a reduced vital capacity and reduced total lung capacity. The diffusing capacity of the lung for car carbon monoxide often shows a reduced amount, and this is the DLCO, a reduced DLCO. However, remember that results may be normal early in the disease. 
The reduced DLCO is a result of fibrosis in the interstitium, and so carbon monoxide does not enter circulation properly. There is reduced gas exchange, a reduced DLCO. Here is a chest x-ray of someone with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Important clinical pearl is that typically idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis has lower lobe predominance. A chest x-ray may be normal early in the disease, and this can evolve to bilateral reticular infiltrates, hazy opacities, reduced inspiratory lung volumes in established disease. A high resolution CT chest is gold standard and there's a pathological pattern of what's called usual interstitial pneumonia. Now the usual interstitial pneumonia pattern includes bilateral reticulation and honeycombing that is predominantly in the peripheral and in the lower lobes with or without traction bronchiectasis. When the combination of clinical and imaging is not diagnostic, rarely a lung biopsy can be considered. Biopsies from multiple lung lobes are taken. Again, changes seen in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis have lower lobe predominance. And so the differential diagnosis for lower lobe predominant disease, you can remember with the acronym AIDS, A for asbestosis, uh, I is for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. D is for drug-induced, so any drugs such as amiodarone, nitrofurantoin, and methotrexate. And S is for scleroderma and other connective disease, except for ankylosing spondylitis, which is the only one with upper lobe predominance. The treatment for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis could be divided into non-pharmacological and pharmacological treatment. So non-pharmacological treatment, very important, smoking cessation, you know, yearly influenza as a vaccination as well as the pneumococcal vaccines, supplemental oxygen, pulmonary rehabilitation, and consideration of a lung transplant. Pharmacological therapy, interestingly, since several pathways are likely to contribute to the patho uh, genesis and pathophysiology of pulmonary fibrosis. Um, there are two main agents that have been approved. These are nintendinib and perfinidone. Normally, fibroblasts and fibrocytes contain specific tyrosine kinase receptors, which respond to growth factors, including platelet-derived growth factors, uh, fibroblast growth factors, and uh, vascular endothelial growth factors. And Stimulation of this causes the fibroblasts to activate, proliferate, differentiate, which will cause the interstitial changes in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Nintendinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, um, and so it inhibits the pathways VEGF, FGF, and PDGF. Perfinidone inhibits transforming growth factor beta, which normally stimulates collagen production. The side effects of this include anorexia, vomiting, photosensitive rash, and liver derangement. Side effects of nintendinib include diarrhea, liver function, test abnormality, increased risk of bleeding, and myocardial infarction has been reported. Other medications um, used in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is antacids because of the risk of gastroesophageal reflux disease and the microaspiration in causing um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Steroids are typically not recommended. Clinical presentation of someone with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, again, chronic exertional dyspnea is universal. A dry, uh, chronic cough without purulency, because if they have mucopurulent coughs, this would you know, sway you to diagnose bronchiectasis, for example. And there can be clubbing, evidence of clubbing, uh, acrocinosis, just as, you know, cyanosis bilateral velcro crackles, inspiratory crackles specifically, as well as fatigue and lethargy. Complications and mortality. So idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is progressive with a median survival of three to five years after diagnosis. 
The progression of disease, however, is variable and may be associated with periods of stability with intermittent periods of acute decline. Up to 20% have acute exacerbations, characterized by worsening hypoxic respiratory failure. Exacerbations are often idiopathic, uh, but can be triggered by events such as infection, aspiration, or some drug toxicity. Now, interestingly, there's an increased risk of uh, venothromboembolism, lung cancer, and pulmonary hypertension. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a chronic and progressive lung disease characterized by inspiratory uh, Velcro-like crackles, clubbing, with a median survival of up to five years. It has lower lobe predominance and is typically diagnosed gold standard with a high resolution CT chest, which shows reticular changes, honeycombing, as well as traction bronchiectasis. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.